into this third year, as I said, the Antichrist has his false prophets now preaching another gospel, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of the Antichrist, uh, promoting the message of uh, the fallen angels. He says there are false prophets among the people, false teachers among you who should privately bring in damnable heresies. And he goes on to say, if God spared not the angels that sinned, that's in Genesis 6, remember those fallen angels that came and cohabited with women? You know why they did that? They wanted to uh, thwart the human genome because God promised through the seed of the woman the Messiah would come. Well, if they could corrupt the human genetic design and institute or insert into that the seed of the serpent, then the Messiah would be contaminated. He wouldn't have a good body in which to dwell. Uh, Jesus came in the flesh. And, and God had to destroy the world in order that Noah and his family, the only ones who were genetically pure at this time, I mean, it was coming down to the, to the very end of the human race. Had uh, Noah and his family been corrupted, that would have been it. I mean, it would be all over. The Messiah could not have come through the seed of the woman to save the world. And that's what these angels wanted to do. So, he delivered them into chains of darkness, reserved unto judgment. Verse 9 says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And obviously, we are approaching that day of judgment when they will be punished. He goes on to say, which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray and followed the way of Balaam. Balaam is the one who corrupted the people or tried to corrupt the people. Uh, first he tried to curse them and he couldn't. So he told the king of the Moabites, look, if you will send Moabite women among the Jewish men to lure them and to marry them, then that which will be born of them will be, uh, shall we say, the seed of the serpent again. So the, the pure strain of, of the Messiah uh, would be corrupted and God would have to punish them. Cause them to sin and God will have to punish them. So Satan has been trying to thwart the um, chosen people and the seed of planet earth uh, for all these thousands of years. And in the third year of the tribulation period, evidently these genetic manipulations will be coming on strong to try to destroy the genetic line of the chosen people. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. This is chapter 3, verse 8. Now, what he's saying here is the tribulation period will come in the seventh millennium. At right at the beginning of the seventh millennium. It will sort of introduce the seventh millennium. Well, here we are in the year 2009. We're nine years into the seventh millennium. We are awaiting this coming of the tribulation period with the rise of the Antichrist, the return of the fallen angels to corrupt the human race once again. Big time, they want to get rid of God. They want to get rid of His anointed. They want to set up their utopia on the planet a world without God. If they can get rid of God completely, kill all the Jews and all the Christians, wipe out everything, have only the worship of Lucifer, then God can go jump in a lake, so to speak. But he says here, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So this is coming. He says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall, be melt, shall melt with fervent heat. And then he says, nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So here he's describing what I think is the tribulation period, especially the third year of the tribulation period when the Antichrist's new religion is coming on strong. They're preparing the world for the, 
for the genocide of the Jews and the elimination of the, of the true God and uh, the knowledge of God and of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I think that's what he's talking about here. And so he says, Remember our beloved brother Paul. Now this is AD 66. Paul was beheaded in June of 66. And Peter was also crucified in 66. And so evidently both of them are in prison at this time. And he's just telling the people, Remember the message of Paul. He had some things, listen to this, which in, our, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction. He's saying here that the writings of the Apostle Paul and, and, and writing, the writings of John, the book of Revelation, and these prophecies are difficult to understand. That's what he's saying here. There are some things that are written that are difficult to understand. They're not there to tell you the day and the hour. They're there to tell you the approximate time. But as we conclude 2 Peter, it certainly looks like he's talking about the third year of the tribulation period. On our next webcast, we'll talk about 1 John and the description of the Antichrist coming and being elevated as king of the world in the three and a half year point, or in the fourth year of the tribulation period. I'm J.R. Church. We'll see you again next time with our analysis of the scriptures.